In this next set of tutorials, I'm going to talk about one of the first elements I approach when I'm preparing for a mix, which is time editing. And by time editing, I mean also the time of recorded instruments, both live and virtual. So sometimes I'll edit, you know, a live drummer, a bass player, a guitar player, or any other instrument that I've recorded to fit in with the timing that I want in the track, either a metronome or a different time feel. So people ask me quite a bit, why would you edit a live player? Why would you want to edit a drummer? Can't he play in time? Can't he just play it correctly the first time? And that's a very valid question. You know, in this world of music production, uh, there are a lot of different methods. Some have been there since the beginning, since, you know, the 60s or the 50s or the 40s. And some are more suitable for somebody in the you know, in the home environment and in a home studio using Cubase or anything else. So in the past, when you had a band, you'd bring in, you know, all the players at the same time, they'll sit in a room and they'll rehearse. And after a while, you'll just record their performance. That's how, you know, the Beatles recorded at the beginning or any other band. Basically, recording would just be capturing that performance and that band would rehearse for that performance and their sound would be you know, gelled together, have a good time feel. Sometimes they wouldn't even use a metronome or a click track. They'll just record to whatever feels right, and that would sound right because they're rehearsing and preparing for that. So nowadays, you know, when you're working on a computer and sometimes you're at home recording players you're bringing in, or maybe you're going out to record the guitar player at his house, and maybe you're, somebody's even sending you tracks from another country. So... The tracks have, and the music creation process have become quite different. You know, you're getting all these different sound sources and you're trying to get, you know, one sound, you're trying to get the sound of the band or the different loops and synthesizers and players that you have in the track. And it's quite hard artistically to get something that's unified, just like those, you know, old recordings back in the day. What happens quite a bit is you're listening to the drummer, the bass player, whatever player is there, and it sounds right on its own, but then you're bringing in these other elements and something is missing. So what I tend to do is actually either just quantize hard everything to the click or edit things on a more natural feel, but getting everything to lock in. So in these next few tutorials, I'm gonna show you a few of the techniques that I use either for a single mic instrument, a multi mic instruments such as drums, uh, virtual instruments in MIDI, and so on and so forth. So stay tuned.